Lil Wayne, fuck you. Lil Wayne, fuck you. I'm really sick of you fucking gremlin degenerates who come out here and fucking push Donald Trump's goddamn propaganda because you want your fucking tax cuts. You know, before I do get into this video, I'm just gonna say this, right? I'm not a Lil Wayne fan, even though he may have some different political point of views. That doesn't mean I'm not a fan of his, or I should say I'm not a fan of his, or that doesn't mean I'm gonna be a fan of his, because he has a pol politician point of views that I may agree with or disagree with. <coughs> so I'm gonna say it like this, man. And I just, I just think it's just really so ironically funny how all of a sudden Little Wayne is. A degenerate y'all gonna call him a bunch of names probably call him gremlin like the stuff I've used to call this motherfucker a long time ago but I just think it's really funny that all of a sudden to black women now cuz I mean she's a black woman now so she's a spoke uh, not saying she's a spokesperson for black women but I'm saying she's a black woman and she's speaking on these issues and I guarantee you this chick is a Lil Wayne fan. She's disappointed in Lil Wayne. Obviously, she's hurt. She's all in her emotions. Because she's hurt that her favorite idol is now a degenerate for having a... I wouldn't say political, uh, political point of view, but I, I guess so. Because... As you can see in the picture, he's endorsed Donald Trump. So I guess that makes him a degenerate for having the choice to choose which candidacy or which president he feels can do the right job based on policies. You know, I find it really crazy funny, like, like really, really hysterically funny how the radical left would automatically attack their own people for having a different political point of views. You see, that's the problem with us as black folks. And I've said it time and time again, is that we always feel we have to control each other, control each other's beliefs and control each other, I guess, on what we say. Um, Besides the point, I think Lil Wayne should have the right to choose whoever he fucking feels like choosing to be his president. I mean, just like you do. But listen, if it's based off common sense, man, we got to really look at policies here, man. All right, let's, let's say for instance, I said in the early beginning of the video, I can't believe you jo you're voting for Donald Trump because... Of a FN tax plan because you want your taxes cut. Well, check this out for big corporation businesses, yes, and people who make at least over a hundred grand, I believe. You know, those taxes will be taxed against people who make more money, I guess, aka the rich, right. And also, it will be taxed against people who make more money and also big corporate businesses. But here's the thing. This is what's going to, this is how it jeopardizes people who make under 100 grand, okay? These big corporate businesses are hiring people like you because, you know, I don't think anybody that just has under 40 grand or so, uh, is going to own a business. I'm, I'm not, well, then again, I could be wrong. But I'm just thinking, I wouldn't expect that for somebody to want to get a, a loan for 40 grand. Sure, man. Just make a long story short. These businesses are going to not only get taxed, but when they hire you, they're going to pay you less money because they can't afford to pay you. 
because of the taxes they got to pay. Not just that, or there will be a reduction on hours. So that's what I'm trying to really get at with a lot of people who are not really too informed with taxes. That either way, we're going to get screwed. <laughs> we're going to get screwed. We're already in trillions of dollars in debt. Okay. So you got to really think of it like this, man. We're going to pay for it in the long run. Our taxes are going to go up. Joe may say taxes will decrease. But eventually, if you look at the charts by 2021, it's going to go even higher. The bracket is going to go higher. So that means there's going to be more taxes for people making less money if the bracket keeps going higher and higher. For these big corporation businesses being taxed, all that tax that they're being taxed on is going to come down on us. Because they're either going to pay us less money, they're either going to give us less hours, and our taxes throughout the years will go up. So don't believe in all that on what Joe is telling you. He's telling you the front end of the story, but he's not giving you the back end of the story. See, I used to be a heavenly Democratic supporter until I started to really do more research in the political stance and when it comes down to... Uh, foreign policies and taxes i know this is a little bit more into politics but everything that we do in life is based off politics just think about it with racism with colorism with uh f you know fights within us and in our community and i can't believe you'll go for donald trump and he's just uh, all this other stuff man it's like we don't really see the bigger picture for what it is as people. And I can say this as in the black community in particular. The reason why I speak upon this is because I am part of it. So we don't really take accountable for looking into laws that are in place in the system for us. Just like policies. See, now more and more every day you're starting to see blacks getting more educated on things this is a good thing that we're emotionally involved like this woman is even though despite my disagreements with her with her stance and also with what she's going to stay with her political views and also a little way well one thing i can agree with you on i'm not a fan of, fan of little way okay i never will be i've even stayed that before i don't like his music i think his music is trash i think his shit is trash but at the end of the day he has a choice to follow who he wants to follow, as in political stance. He so happens to agree with President Trump's policies, and I agree with them too. Because listen, I really don't believe Donald Trump hates this country as much as the mainstream media claims it to be, as far as him being a racist. Because if Donald Trump was a racist, let's just say, hypothetically speaking, he was a full-blown racist right then people will say hey well if he's a full-blown racist he would be unfit to run this country and a lot of people think he is but if you look in stored with his policies and what he's doing they're not being reported on mainstream media just like the black colleges that he's invested money into. They will not put this on mainstream media. But every time I bring this up to black folks, the first thing I get is, oh, so you won't you vote for the white man. You vote for you vote for a cracker. You 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 vote for somebody who's they vote like that. And I said that I don't even stand on one political party. I always say I go for who I feel has the best policies and I think at this time around Donald Trump has the best policies and right now he's he's got the best thing that is looking good for America that could possibly you know give us a little bit of breathing space you know from this trillions of dollars in debt that we're in and try to get America's jobs back from different countries back into our country so that way we can hire our own people and that way we can manufacture things that's supposed to be made in America not made in China so I get it 
our country comes first. That's what he says. And it should be that way. America was always about bragging rights. It was always about us. Okay. Joe Biden says, okay, well. He's about pretty much empowering China. because China doesn't have anything in his own words. Or whatever the hell he says. Y'all get my drift. So, the, besides the whole point and the racial comments and stuff like that, I'm, you know, everything, yeah, I mean, you kind of put that into a sense, but really and truly, it's not, it's, it's, it's deeper than that, man. It's deeper than racism, man. It's deeper than what Joe's doing, man. It's, it's a whole lot deeper than that, man. 62% taxes, man. Just look at the tax break. I, I talked about it earlier. It will have a dramatic effect on people like me and you, even if we don't make the bracket of a hundred to two hundred thousand or four hundred thousand dollars, because eventually those big corporations that are hiring people like me and you, they're not going to give us raises, they're not going to give us bonuses, and they sure as hell probably won't even give us hours. They would expect to get more work out of you and pay you less. Just think about it. So the chain of command has effect on all of us too. It really and truly the only way we can reduce the deficit of not paying so much taxes, knowing that the fact that we owe money to China, we know we, we owe trillions of dollars, we are in debt, but the only way we can reduce those debts, you know, is not by increasing the, the economy <laughs> by having us getting paid more money. Cause you know, even if we get paid more money, we gotta pay more taxes. And this is what the Democrats are trying to do with their tax plan. I mean, listen, I'd rather just get paid the same amount of money than having the uh, the economy or the cost of living, I should say, go up. Because whenever they give us a raise or whenever uh, we get paid more money, let's just say uh, minimum wages goes up, we got to pay more money in taxes. But, you know, the cost of living is going up anyways. I, I get that. But the only way we can stop that from happening is if we uh conserve and i don't know about y'all folks but i mean listen i know a lot of y'all don't want to pay more money in taxes because when you bitching all the time about how you ain't getting much of a tax return and you paying all this money and your prices of your rent goes up and the cost of living goes up here's the reason why this tax plan that joe is putting out this is going to increase your cost of living I'd rather just be the same. Look at New York. Look at Chicago. Not Chicago, but look at New York and L.A. and Miami. It's completely overly expensive out there. People can't even live live in these cities anymore because it's so expensive. It's hard, you know. But hey, it is what it is. But, uh, you know. I wouldn't expect people to, you know, believe anything I say because, you know, if I... You know, want to have a politician different belief, and I believe in Trump's policies. I guess I'm a coon, right? <laughs> and if I say, "Hey, I want to work with the president," I guess I'm a coon too, right? And I guess I'm not black enough, or I gotta be reminded that I'm black. <laughs> Can you believe it? It's so funny that his ex girlfriend had to remind him that he is black and who he's voting for or shouldn't be voting for but yet still they want to tell you Donald Trump is a racist but she's telling you basically you need to vote for who I feel is the right person because you need to be reminded that you are black so in other words, she's saying you're not black enough if you decide to want to vote in a different political stance. Why is that? Why do we put so much pressure on ourselves as black folks to have a different mindset and a political mindset on things where we can easily disagree or agree with things in a peaceful manner? Whether you agree with my statement or not that I support Donald Trump and his policies, that's up to you. I respect that. I respect the fact that you can disagree with me. Hey, shout out to America's comment. Cool dude, that's my brother. He's a liberal. I've got nothing against homie. He's probably watching this right now. Shout out to you. But at the same time, 
we still got that mutual respect for each other. I got a lot of liberals who are friends who don't agree with Donald Trump, but I do. And I got a lot of conservatives who are friends too. But at the same time, I've lost some in that process because of the way I was thinking. And then there's some that, hey, we choose not to discuss about pop. And, and I get it. Some of y'all still sleep, man. Some of y'all still sleep, man. So we got a man named Joe Biden who said all these racist, derogatory words. Especially the, the, the one where he says, well, black people are like, he said something about Latinos and blacks, like they're not a diversity community like the Latinos are. What? As if you can't think for yourselves. The Latinos do. Because if you look at it, Cubans and Colombians are a little bit more conservative. And I had some time to really look up on this shit. They're a little bit more conservative versus Puerto Ricans and probably Dominicans. Because if you look at it, and it's sad to say this though, but you will usually see Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, and blacks usually in the same hoods. But for the most part, it's Puerto Ricans. And, and then you see Dominicans too, yes. And then you see blacks. You don't see too many Colombians in this country, in these poor sector neighborhoods, really. Not really. Or you don't even really see, you know, See, this is getting real deep into politics now. You don't really see too many Cubans mixed up with Dominicans or Puerto Ricans in the same area, do you? No. They're staying on different sectors because they have different policies and beliefs. See, they separate us for the longest time. Some people can agree with me. That's totally fine. And some people can disagree with me. That's fine. Say whatever you want. Get in your emotions. That's cool. But I'm speaking for the people who's who's got an open mind to things and want to learn stuff that unlearn themselves, learn things that were taught or that wasn't taught to them growing up in school, things that we should know about. But if you look at it, this is how they play politics with us. They separate us. And once again, we're being separated again. Just, just look at it. I understand that it's very easy to convince people of very basic shit. If you repeat it enough times, people start to believe that it's true. It's not fucking true that Donald Trump has done jack shit for motherfucking criminal justice reform. The First Step Act was a bipartisan act that actually built on Obama's Fair Sentencing Act of 2010. And she never did a thing except in 1994 when he did such harm to the black community and they were called, and he called them super predators. And he said that, he said it, super predators. And they have never lived that down. 1994, your crime bill, the super predators. Nobody has done more for the black community than Donald Trump. And if you look, with the exception of Abraham Lincoln, possible exception, but the exception of Abraham Lincoln, nobody has done what I've done. Criminal justice reform, Obama and Joe didn't do it. I don't even think they tried because they had no chance at doing it. They might have wanted to do it, but if you had to see the arms I had to twist to get that done, it was not a pretty picture. And everybody knows it, including some very liberal people that cried in my office. They cried in the Oval Office. Two weeks later, they're out saying, gee, we have to defeat him. Criminal justice reform, prison reform, Opportunity Zones with Tim Scott, a great senator from South Carolina. He came in with this incredible idea for Opportunity Zones. It's one of the most successful programs. People don't talk about it. This beneficiary, the black and Hispanic communities, and then historically black colleges and universities. After three years of coming to the office, I love some of those guys, they were great. They came into the office and they said, I said, what are you doing? After three years, I said, why do you keep coming back? because we have no funding. I said, you don't have to come back every year. We have to come back because President Obama would never give them long-term funding. And I did 10 year long-term funding. And I gave them more money than they asked for because they said, I think you need more. 
And I said, the only bad part about this is I may never see you again because I got very friendly with them and they like me and I like them. But I saved it. Colleges and universities. Okay. And secondly, we're in a situation here where we, the federal prison system was reduced by 38,000 people under our administration. And one of these things we should be doing, there should be no, no minimum ma mandatories in the law. That's why I'm offering $20 billion to states to change their state laws to eliminate minimum mandatories and set up drug courts. No one should be going to jail because they have a drug problem. They should be going to rehabilitation, not to jail. We should fundamentally change the system, and that's what I'm going to do. But why didn't he do it four years ago? Why didn't you do that four years ago, even less than that? Why didn't you I when you were vice president? You keep talking about all these things you're going to do and you're going to do this. But you were there just a short time ago and you guys did not since Abraham Lincoln. Has anybody done what I've done for the black community? Now, you have done nothing other than the crime bill, which put oh God th tens of thousands of black men, mostly, in jail. All right, let me, you know let what? me, uh, let me they ask Vice President Biden because if you look at what's happening with the voting right now, let me ask they Vice remember President that Biden you treated them about very, very badly. The, Just the, take a look at what's happening out there. Vice President Biden actually built on Obama's Fair Sentencing Act of 2010, and it was improved by Democrats such as Senator Kamala Harris. <laughs>